Like the Carnotaurus, Baryonyx aquafulguar is a large carnivore, but not large enough to rival the island's apex predators. While not as powerful as some deep sea predators or Spinosaurus, Baryonyx is an extremely fast swimmer who is still sufficiently nimble enough to threaten most creatures on the island. And yet, despite being a fast, dangerous dinosaur, Baryonyx almost exclusively consumes fish and other water dwellers. The highly specific metabolism of Baryonyx seems to allow it to heal wounds almost preternaturally fast after feeding on nutritious fish meat. Perhaps this is why Baryonyx rarely attacks land animals. Baryonyx's natural affinity for aquatic predation means that once tamed, it learns to kill ocean dwellers even more efficiently. Between its speed and its power, Baryonyx makes an ideal choice for anyone interested in frequently moving between water and land travel, and who values speed and agility over raw strength. Castoroides is a large mammalian herbivore that tends to live near water. Unlike other larger beaver species, this one retains the chisel-shaped teeth of modern beavers. As is typical for beavers, they build dams as habitats, but the larger creatures on the island have a tendency to trample them. As a result, finding unsullied dams in the wild is quite rare. Castoroides itself doesn't seem to realise how dangerous the island is. I don't know if it's simply too dumb to notice the dangers, or if it just doesn't care. But Castoroides happily goes about its day, playing in the water and gnawing on wood. The value of a tamed Castoroides is obvious from its physiology. The creature naturally gathers wood extremely efficiently, far more than most species on the island. It's not the strongest creature, so it can only carry limited amounts but it is a natural lumberjack. Possessing the appearance of a half-duck, half-dinosaur, Hesperonis is a medium-sized fish-eating bird, common in the rivers and lakes of the island. It would be about two-thirds the height of a human if it stood tall, but it rarely does. Hesperonis spends most of its time gliding along the surface of the water, where it is much more manoeuvrable. Hesperonis is barely a threat to any land-dwelling creature, as its legs are too short for it to move around effectively. But it is surprisingly fast in the water. It can easily hunt down fish and other small water-dwelling creatures. Not particularly useful for hunting and not being affectionate, Hesperonis is primarily kept for the eggs it produces after consuming much fish. When rendered correctly, the eggs separate into two useful substances. One is a protein substance that is high in calories, and the other is an oily liquid that is effectively the same as the oil found in the ocean. Found along the island's many inland waterways, Lutra Peloso have become exceptionally adept at hunting and foraging. This species of otter has to be particularly cunning because of its diminutive size and fierce competition for its preferred food source, fish. It is not a creature that excels at combat and would not naturally pose as an intimidating threat to any predators. Finding packs of river otters is simple enough. They are distinguished by their elongated bodies, bushy tails and webbed feet. Their trusting and inquisitive nature ensures they are often hunted for their lustrous fur, but many prefer to tame them to become trusted companions. There are few creatures which provide the companionship that Lutra Peloso does. Rather than travelling beside you, it would prefer to comfortably rest on your back, providing insulation. Once domesticated, it can be told to harvest fish on demand, with a specific goal in mind from the fish that it consumes. The otter has a knack for foraging silica pearls and can even yield a slight chance at finding black pearls within. Woo! Ooh, yeah! Mega piranha magnet morsis is a carnivorous fish found fairly commonly in the rivers and ponds of the island. Its bite is incredibly powerful. I've even seen them break through the armoured turtles of the island. Mega Piranha has one of the strongest bites pound for pound of any creature on the island. When encountering a Mega Piranha, be on the lookout for the rest of the school. 
No one mega piranha is an overwhelming threat, but their tendency to swarm prey can make short work of much larger and stronger creatures. Any given mega piranha is easy to kill, but killing the entire school can be a daunting task. Like some of the other creatures on the island, a tamed mega piranha is best suited as a guard. Their high metabolism makes them require more food than many other creatures, but they are very adept at hunting their own food, particularly the coelacanths. Coelacanth nutritia is one of the few creatures on the island with a relative which can be found back home. The coelacanth thrive in the waters around the island, as well as within rivers and lakes. Unlike most coelacanths, coelacanth nutrition meat contains less oil and urea. In fact, it is one of the healthier sources of meat I've yet found. Most coelacanths are opportunistic feeders that eat anything smaller than itself, likely including baby water snakes, insect and plant life, and perhaps each other. While their limited intelligence makes them unsuitable for taming, coelacanths provide a viable source of meat for coastal or water-dwelling tribes. Many a day has been spent fishing by the water's edge, often with surprising results, as coelacanths often have consumed discarded garbage that is sometimes of great value. Due to their small size, though, a larger tribe would require a significant number of coelacanths to feed itself. Fairly unremarkable by the island standards, Onkorhynchus grexlamia is a generally passive fish. Its main form of protection is swimming in a large school. Onkorhynchus does not like conflict and generally swims away from anything larger than itself at very high speeds. Once provoked, however, Onkorhynchus becomes quite aggressive, along with its nearby brethren. It locks onto its prey with its long sabre teeth and begins draining the creature's blood. This loss of blood is not too dangerous alone, but when a school of Onkorhynchus attack at once, their target quickly loses speed and stamina from blood loss, drowning if it cannot breathe underwater. Like many of the smaller fish found on or around the island, Onkorhynchus cannot be tamed, but it is often herded and harvested for its resources. In particular, certain cuts of Onkorhynchus meat are considered to have superb quality and are often referred to as prime fish, used for specific high-end concoctions and taming the island's many piscivorous creatures. Among the few carnivores on the island that can match Tyrannosaurs in size, Spinosaurus aquarellica does not match its ferocity. Spinosaurus' four legs and large sail make it fairly swift on land and incredibly fast in the water. Its marvel is arguably the ability to change stances by going from quadruped to biped. The creature is visually distinguished by its spectacular sail. In my travels, I have seen many different and brightly colored sails, as every Spinosaurus appears to have a slightly different palette. The one comforting fact about Spinosaurus is that it seems more at home near water than away from it. Although the creature is more powerful, faster, agile, and insatiable while in water, it tends to become less hostile as it gets farther from it. On one occasion, I only escaped a Spinosaurus by getting far enough from its lake home to make it simply lose interest. Spinosaurus is an incredibly well-rounded apex carnivore, faster than a Tyrannosaurus in water, and able to travel on land unlike a Megalodon, its all-terrain versatility may be unrivaled. Although its movement speed is slower in a biped stance, it gains considerable attacking strength and mobility in this form. For hunters who wish to have a well-rounded mount, Spinosaurus may be the ideal choice, if they can acquire one. Here is another example of a creature that seems to have evolved beyond its historical traits. Everything points to this being a saltwater ray, but Manta Mobula has developed the ability to swim into the island's rivers and shallows, as well as through the open ocean. Perhaps there were originally two types of ray on the island before, but years of interbreeding combined their lineage. Normally docile, Manta Mobula is a carnivore only in that it naturally consumes plankton. Fortunately, 
Manta mobula is usually not aggressive, unless encroached. Its tail is incredibly sharp and can pierce through thick hide and armor with ease. While not the fastest swimmer around the island, Manta mobula is among the deadliest of small ocean mounts. Tribes who value striking power over speed often keep large schools of Manta to right. Its capability to briefly leap out of water provides it a showy tactic for avoiding combat as well. A quick jab through the heart of an unsuspecting survivor can easily take them by surprise. Thusly, many tribes use it as an escort for their slower cargo-carrying swimmers. 